Hey guys, this is Brian at Obedia, and today I'm going to showcase a cool new feature in Personas' Studio One 2 digital audio workstation. That new feature is integrated pitch correction using Celimony's Melodyne pitch correction plugin. Uh, this is a brand new feature in Studio One 2. Melodyne is one of the best known pitch correction plugins uh, in the plugin world and it's now directly integrated into Studio One, which is a great new feature. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about it. Now, one thing I should mention before I move forward here is that if you're using Studio One Professional, you'll have a fully licensed copy of Melodyne Essential. However, if you're using Studio One Producer and Studio One Artist, you'll still have Melodyne Essential, but those versions are trial versions, so you'll be able to upgrade later if you would like. And uh, if you already own Melodyne, if you update to version 1.3 or later, the integrated support will immediately work in Studio One. So as I say, this is integrated support. This is a little different from what you might be used to making use of with Melodyne uh, and some pitch correction plugins where you need to bridge the plugin into uh, your audio workstation and various things like that. This is actually directly integrated into Studio One, so you get to make these pitch correction changes in real time. So that's one of the things that makes this really cool. So let's go ahead and dive in and show you how we can make use of it. Now there's two ways that I can access Melodyne for an audio track in Studio One. The first one is to simply right click on a, a audio region in my timeline, scroll down to the audio window, and then you'll notice I have the option edit with Melodyne. Now you'll also see that I have the shortcut here, control M. So if I were to hold down control M on Windows, I would be able to access Melodyne for this piece of audio that I'm working with. Or if I'm on a Mac, I can use command M in order to access Melodyne. Either way, I will go ahead and click here on Edit with Melodyne. When I do that, the Melodyne panel is going to open up. It's going to do a little bit of thinking, and it's going to analyze the audio that I'm working with on this track. And so now I can start to make some changes, but I'm going to go ahead and pop this window out by just taking a look at the little pop-out box right here on the top right-hand corner of Melodyne. This will detach Melodyne from my Studio One project, and then I can simply drag Melodyne around as an independent window as I work with it in Studio One. So this is a great way to be able to speed up your workflow. So now you're going to notice that I have all of these little orange notes, and these are actually called blobs in Melodyne. So these are note blobs, and each blob essentially represents where Melodyne has decided that the audio that I'm working with falls in the musical register. So it's ran some analysis, and it's decided that I have notes at D flat, and notes at B, and notes at B flat, and various things like that. So now I can start making changes to these various blobs as I see fit. I've got three tools in the top of Melodyne Essential right here. I have the main tool, the scroll tool, and the zoom tool. So initially you'll probably want to make use of the zoom tool. And with it selected, you can simply hold down the left button of your mouse. And by dragging up and down, you can zoom vertically in and out, and then by dragging to the left you can zoom horizontally out, and dragging to the right you can zoom horizontally in. So this allows you to get really close onto a blob that you would like to make use of. Now of course you can scroll up and down, and you can also make use of the scroll tool in order to just simply kind of grab and move around and take a look at the many blobs which you can edit in your Melodyne panel here. However, as I say, there is a third tool, and that's the main tool. And this is the tool that you're probably going to be using most of the time that you're using Melodyne, because this tool is context sensitive. So what that means is that depending on where I move it over a blob, I will get different controls which I can apply to that blob. So if I move it to the far left of that blob, I can move the start of this note. And you can see I just grab a hold of the little vertical line right there, and I can move it around to change the start of that note. Now I can also do this for the end of that note by moving it to the far right. I can grab a hold of any of these lines and change the note end. 
And then if I want to actually get down to the nitty gritty of having fun with the pitch correction here, I can move my mouse to the middle of this note. And now that I have this note selected, I can click and drag it up or down in the register. So you can see now I've totally changed how this note will play back. And if I undo that, I can move that note back to where it originally was. And you can see that I also immediately get an outline here just to the left of that note when I move my mouse over, which tells me roughly where it is in the register. So this is roughly at D4, and I can move it up to F4 if I would like. You can see how easy it is to do that. Of course, I can change some of the other ways that this note will play back by changing its start and its end. And this allows me to really quickly and easily edit the note to my liking. So if I don't like how quickly a note ended, I can drag that blob out. If I think that that note has lasted too long, I can drag that blob in to change its end. I can change its start, of course, if I would like it to start differently. So I have a lot of different options which I can do to each of these notes. And the great thing is that all of this is in real time. So if I make some changes to different blobs here... I can now play this back immediately to hear the new changes. So you can see my vocalist was definitely not singing as high as I have now moved his current vocal blob up to here. So this allows me to really be able to have some fun with the vocal or of course I can also just simply go in and fix performance issues which I might know were a problem when I was recording but rather than having to re-record a million times over I can simply go in and make those changes after I've done my recording and continue to move along very quickly. A couple other sections to make a note of here in Melodyne. Here on the top underneath my notes, you'll notice that I have a selected note register, and this will tell me what my currently selected note is. And then I can find out what the pitch deviation and sense of that selected note uh, currently is. I also have a BPM counter right here, and this allows me to change the tempo if I would like. And I also have a couple other options here on the top right-hand corner of Melodyne. That's the correct pitch and quantize time buttons. Now, if I make use of one of these without selecting any notes, the change will be applied to the entirety of the blobs in Melodyne. However, I can also lasso select notes by simply holding down the left mouse button, clicking and dragging in an empty area, and selecting a number of notes. Now, I have two options now. I can either manually edit these notes by simply clicking on one and dragging. <coughs> So now I've changed all of those notes. I can scrub at the top of my ruler by simply moving the mouse around. So I can hear the change immediately by scrubbing there on the top of the ruler. And if I would like to get a little more in depth with my editing, I can make use of the correct pitch option. Now this will open the correct pitch dialog box. And here I can change the correct pitch center. So as I make changes to this, you're going to see that immediately all of the currently selected notes are going to match up to the correct pitch center, which I make. I can also change the correct pitch drift here. And this is going to, to change the drift in the correction and how these notes are kind of going to kind of drift into each other. After I've made those changes and I hit OK, you're going to notice there's no rendering happening. I don't have to wait for this to render and make the changes. It's already immediately changed, which is awesome. Now, I also have the option for quantizing time, and if I click on that, you're going to get a number of options that you're used to with quantizing time in an audio workstation. I've got quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and so on. And if I make changes to the intensity of the setting which I decide to make use of, I can immediately change the timing of these notes. So this allows me to quantize really quickly and change any selected notes or of course all of the notes that I'm currently working with in my current Melodyne selection. Again, no rendering is being done, so when I'm all done, I can go ahead and just scroll back a little bit and play back my new changes, which will probably sound a little crazy, but let's go ahead and listen to it. <laughs> So you can see, in this case, I'm just having fun and editing blobs 
to my liking and really just kind of, you know, playing around with things here. But you can see how quickly you could find one problem note, simply select it and then change it in the overall register in order to make it match up with the rest of your notes much more completely. Now, you'll want to be careful when you do pitch correction because too much can become noticeable. But if that's an effect that you're looking for, such as getting the auto tuning effect that's very popular in a lot of popular music, you can very easily start to get that effect by having some fun with Melodyne. Or of course, you can also do things such as adding a harmony to an existing vocal piece or really have some fun, add this to your drums or guitars and really start to tweak things and make a production that will sound unlike anything that you've probably ever heard before. So this is just a quick overview of the very cool things that you can do with Melodyne Essential in Studio One 2. And uh, I hope that you guys find it useful. You'll want to play around with this, have some fun with it, and just start learning about pitch correction. Because again, you can really dive in very deep into pitch correction and really spend a lot of time doing it. But this is one of the great things about Studio One is that you'll be able to do this very quickly and start having some fun with it. I hope you guys found this useful. As always, please stay in touch with me. My email address is brian at obedia.com. Find me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. And of course, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Please give me a call. Go beyond the tutorial. Work one on one with us, and we'll show you how we can help you to get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software and help you to tame your technology, which is what we do here at Obedia. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next tutorial. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.